Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I'm here in my garage. That's right, I've run out of room everywhere, <laughs> everywhere else. Ah, oh, this is crazy. Okay, but look, look what I've got here. This is the Zortrex M200 3D printer, and this is my official review. Let's do it. Are you ready? Go. Ah, oh, welcome back. No joke. I was upstairs trying to find some room to film this review and I ran out. So here I am in my illustrious garage and I'm pointing towards my garage door because all around you is stuff and you don't need to see that. But you do need to see this. This is the Zortrax M200 3D printer and this is going to serve as my official My Style review. I'm going to give you some printer information. I'm going to show you some of the models that it has printed. I'm going to show you a time lapse of a model being printed, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of how this, per how you pull something from this perforated build plate, and how you remove the models from the built-in support structures that it builds in. Uh, I'm going to show you the filament. I'm going to show you an unboxing of the filament and how well Zortrax packs the filament to keep it safe on its travels from there to you. Finally, I'm going to do what I usually do. I'm going to tell you what I like. I'm going to tell you what I don't like, and I'm going to give you some final thoughts on this printer. But that said, there's a caveat for this whole entire thing. What is it? You'll have to wait until the end. For now, let's start by talking about this printer. The Zortrax M200 3D printer has a build volume that's decent sized. It's 200 millimeters in the X axis. It is 200 millimeters in the Y axis, and it is 180 millimeters in the Z axis. This extruder here takes the 1.75 millimeter Zortrax filament and brings it down to a nozzle that can go up to 380 degrees centigrade. That's over 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And for the love of everything awesome in this world, don't touch the hot nozzle. Ugh. Always remember kids, if you're 3D printing and for some reason it starts smelling like barbecue chicken, you're touching the hot nozzle. This extruder and nozzle will lay down filament at 90 to 400 microns in height. That's not too bad. So your, your layer heights are anywhere between 900 micron and 400 micron, depending how you slice it in the Z Suite software. Speaking of that, before this day, I did prepare a Harry Potter wand and I showed you the Z Suite software. I showed you how it slices and I showed you a time lapse of the model being built. So right now, why don't you pause this video and then go look at that video that I've linked up there. Do it. Ah, you're back from watching that video. Didn't you find that interesting? The support structures for the for the wand, they they didn't really affect the bottom layer of the wand, which I thought was interesting. The Z Suite software did take an, an just an extraordinary amount of time to slice the model on a Mac Pro with eight cores running 20 gigs of RAM. But, you know, regardless of that, uh, it did a fantastic job and the wand looks amazing and I still need to work with Bill Duran to get it painted, don't worry, that's coming up in the future. But let's stay on this, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper. Let's do a full or nearly full build plate full of a model and have the Z Suite software build its raft and all of the support structures needed to print this model as the pieces are laid out by the designer. And in this case, I'm going to be doing the Soundwave model from the user 3D Workbench. He's a good guy, you gotta follow him on Twitter, but this is his model and I found it on myminifactory.com. So without further ado, let me take you to the Soundwave model. Oh shoot, let me move my unicorn. There we go. There's the build plate of the Zortrax M200, and here is the Soundwave model from 3D Workbench. It's a great model, and this was printed at 0.09 millimeter layer height. The detail that was achieved by the printer is simply stunning. One of the things here that I'd like to point out is even though this is built on a diagonal with layers, this is smooth. It doesn't appear to have layers in it. That's amazing. 
I wanted to show you what a near full size build plate Zortrax print was like. And I also wanted to give you an idea of what their support system was like using Z Suite. This is going to accomplish both things. I'm gonna use a chisel to start lifting up the sides and hopefully get under the model pieces. It's starting to come up fairly easily, which is good. I'll just keep turning it, keep putting the chisel under. It is quite a bit of a process to remove a print from a Zortrax build plate, but you have to decide, is the quality worth it? Hopefully, what I show you will help you decide. There we go, we've removed it from the build plate. There's a few little things. I'm gonna set those to the side. Uh, you can kind of, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there exists material within the holes of the build plate. And if you remove these screws, you can actually take the perforated plate off and clean it out. I'm not going to do that right now. Here it is off the build plate. And if you look on the back, you can see the little perforated little things that kind of a filament that stick through those holes on the build plate. All right, let's get started. Let's see how easy it is to just remove things from the raft. This piece doesn't have any support. Let's see if we can remove it from the raft easily. Came off clean and that's what the underside looks like. That's not too bad. Oh, and I lied. There is some support there. Let's see if that just comes out. It might just come out. I've got my needle nose plier standing by. It looks like the support material is removing fairly easily. There's still some support material left in here and left in here, and I'll get to that at the end. But this piece has been removed. The back looks as it should, and it's of high quality. This piece came off really easily. The support seemed to come off fairly easily. If you look, you can see that there's some remnants of the plastic where it was attached for the supports and that should be able to be cleaned off easily. There are supports underneath this socket joint that would happen and those, wow. <laughs> okay, those, those come off super easy. Well, that piece, that piece looks good. I wanted to do this because I wanted to show you the entire process of removing a model from the Zortrax build plate. It's not the cleanest and it does use extra filament, but it's up to you to decide if the extra filament used gives enough of a quality boost that it makes it worth it. All right, that's a hole right here and that's a hole right there. So the filament might be a little bit harder to get out of that, but I've got my needle nose pliers and those seem to be doing an okay job. Get out of there. Get right out of there. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'm getting close. There we go. Okay, that's the main piece. Let's see how that looks. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. I guess let's do this side. And there's the hole. It's always nice when the pieces just lift out. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. Maybe if I just start taking pieces off 
of the raft. I can then start to clean it. Oh, look at that. This is one of Soundwave's fists and it just popped right off. Oh, that looks good. There's Soundwave's face. I like that. That turned out good. All right, all of the pieces are off. Let's just start getting the support off of them. This one is good. This one is good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to this one and see if I can't get some of these smaller pieces out. Might need my knife for this one. Good. Oh, I love it when the supports just pop off like that. That's incredibly nice. That one's good. Oh, that one's good. This fist is okay. This is the head and it's got no supports on it. Here is a leg. Tiny little piece right on the inside. I need to get that out. There you go. Here's the support on this side. Oh, this is interesting. It looks, let me, let me get the other one and compare. Uh, where is it? Here. Okay. Looks like there's, this is inset and there is a, there's support material on the inside. I thought for some reason, maybe the bottom layer <laughs> didn't print. But that is, that is not the case. This is actually support material on the inside for it to print with. I can get that out. That's not a problem at all. All right, with something like this, because the support material is there's a little piece right there. Let's get that. Because the support material itself is is kind of on the was on the inside and it's not in a place that's easy to get to, that might be trouble for you to take it out. However, it 
I don't know. I haven't put them all together yet, so I don't know if it's even needed to be removed and if so, by how much. So let's, let's revisit that topic once we get all these pieces together. Close. It wants to come out. All right, that's going to be good enough. This piece has supports right here. Boy, that went flying. That came out okay. This fist is okay. Let's see, this leg has some in the holes. Might need the needle nose for this. There's probably an easier way to do this, but who said I was ever the one to do things the easy way? Not me. All right, that's out. And then this smaller hole right here. Looks like that little bit needs out. From that side, there we go. This doesn't look like it's gonna to be too difficult to get the supports off of. That looks good. All right, this is a pretty involved support piece. So that's, well, okay, I guess it just comes off. <laughs> that's awesome. That's impressive. Look at that, it had that peg right there. Smooth, smooth. Oh, same thing on this one. That's it. That's the last piece. Let's double check. Uh, oh wait, one more piece. This is the back of the head. <laughs> Can't believe I almost missed that. Good thing I checked before I hucked that in the garbage. I mean the recycling bin. That's what I mean, the recycling bin. The support material is coming off. Looks like there's support in a hole, which means I'll need to clear it out. Uh, that's a thin, thin section. Try not to break that. <laughs> okay. Wow, that worked. So here it is. Let's see if the camera zooms in. Come on, camera. There, that's the back of the head, I think. It goes like, let's see, nope. Looks like it'll go like that. Oops. I've got all of the pieces 
off of this and I triple checked to make sure. So there's this and that. That right here is the pile of support material and filament that's not a part of the model that the Zortrax uses to produce the quality pieces. Let's move that to the side because more importantly, these pieces printed with the Z Ultrat filament at 0.09 millimeter layer heights, they look stunning. Uh, there's, there's places where I can't even tell this was 3D printed. There's no, there's no lines and it's smooth. It's smooth like injection molded smooth. That is incredible. I'm, I'm completely and totally impressed with how these pieces turned out. And I did not move them on the print bed in a way that I thought, hey, this might print better. I didn't arrange these pieces in a way to make them print better on the Zortrax. I dragged all of the STL files into the Z Suite software and just let it do its magic. So the orientation of the legs like this on the print bed rather than like this was the decision of the model builder and Zortrax, well, it did what it could to make it happen and it made it happen. Wow, okay, I'm impressed. I know that this model needs to be put together, but for now, let's just say that these are wonderful pieces and the Zortrax did a wonderful job putting them together. That's just cool. That's really cool. Wasn't that cool? It's amazing how well the support structures are pulled away from the model and not leaving too much, if, if any, scarring. Plus, at 0.09 millimeter layer height, you're talking about a model that is near smooth or it almost looks as if there are no layers whatsoever. I still need to put that model together and that will be in a future video. But for now, let's talk about these guys. Look at this. I've got a giant robber Rex and I've got this, this hollow jet right here. I did do a close up of these models and I did talk about them and let's do that right now. Here are some other models that I printed with the Zortrax. This is a, a, a fan blade of some sort and it printed like this. What you, what you notice about this immediately is, is how precise the filament is laid down. And the Z Ultrat filament is phenomenally strong. I'm trying to bend these blades and they do flex a little bit, but they, they don't break. This is an extremely solid piece. And if I hook this up to a drill, this would blow air. This house turned out great. I hope you can see the, the detail in this house. You can see the individual brick lines in this, this column, whatever you want to call it, this tower. There's the, the roof and you can tell that the roof has a lot of definition. There were supports and I was able to easily remove those. You can see some of the support lines are left right along there. But this is an amazing model. I'm, I'm not lying. It's turned out, I, if I, if I were to use the word perfect, that's what would describe this. It's, it's perfect. It's just perfect. How could I not print this? Rawr, this is a robber Rex. And I made it big, as you can tell. I tried to cover the entire build platform, which I did. Here is part of the raft that it was on. I didn't save the rest because it's a raft and I don't save those. But I want you, I want you to look at this model. Here's side A. Here's side B. It's really hard to tell which side was on the raft. And this is a large flat piece. It's incredibly impressive how well this printed. And I'm, I'm literally shocked at the quality of this being that all I did was slice the model and hit print. And it stands up and it goes rawr and it, ready? Yeah, he's a mean dinosaur. Last but not least of these models that I want to show you is this jet. This is hollow. This is also hollow when I printed it. But look, look, the Zortrax, it messed up. It messed up right here and it doesn't look nearly as good. And I think I figured out why. So when I printed it again, you could tell it's not messed up and it produced great results. When these jets were on the build plate, this one was like this and this one was like this. They were printed individually, but I'm showing you here ne you know, next to each other so you can kind of get an idea. The nozzles here and the Zortrax 
fan, filament fan is right here. So as it's printing this, the fan is reaching all of these parts fairly decently. But this was like this. So as it was printing this up, this part of the airplane just wasn't getting enough airflow from the fan to cool off in time. And so it, it buggered up. In fact, look at the wheel on the back. <laughs> This part and the wheel, the underside of the wheel, were on that same side and the fan just couldn't get the airflow correctly to that side. I mean, if you look at the, the fin on the other side or the wing or whatever you want to call it, it's, it's perfect. This above here is perfect. It's just that little spot and that little spot. I'm, I found that to be very interesting. So when I did reprint it, it did work as advertised and this hollow jet could take off. I'm not gonna lie, I love me some robber wrecks. This thing, I print this on nearly every printer I have, and I print them big, and I print them small, and I print them in Ninja Flex, and I print them in non Ninja Flex, and it just always turns out really, really well. Well, this, this was printed with the white Z Ultrat, and the sound wave was printed with the blue Z Ultrat material from Zortrax, and this is housed right here in the back. In fact, here it is. But let me show you how they pack up this filament. And I'm gonna use the pink Zeltrat filament to show you that. So without further ado, let's unbox the filament. Well, here's the Zortrax filament. It says Zortrax M200 right here. And here's the Z filament series. If I look on the side, it says pink, pastel pink, Zortrax materials, Zeltrat pastel pink. The box looks a little beat up. You can tell this corner has been smushed in. This corner is smushed in, but a box for filament is much like a helmet for your head. The box can be destroyed as long as it protects the goodness that's inside. With that in mind, let's check out what's inside. Filament boxes from Zortrax. You have to pull that tab and then you lift up. You can bring it down. Then you lift it up again. Well, it looks like it survived pretty well. So we can take this box and set it aside. Here is the filament. It's in a nice airtight electrostatic seal. And there is uh, some desiccant. No, that's not desiccant. That is, that just tells me about the filament. It looks like I expected desiccant. Hmm, all right. Well, I think we need to open this up. Get my knife. Rip it open. There we go. I can set this aside. Here's the filament. Z Ultrat. Look at that. Dedicated for the Zortrax M200. Zortrax.com. The filament on the inside looks good. Oh, this tells me how to handle it and how to put the filament back on the roll when not in use. It's showing off the different holes in the spool that you can put the filament through when it's being not used, you can tell it's it's actually through one of those holes. Right now, the filament is wrapped in plastic and it's, it looks like they've taken pretty good precautions to make sure their filament was okay. Here it is, this is the pastel pink and honest to goodness, that's a pastel pink. I'm curious to see how this prints and I will print with this on the Zortrax in, in the coming weeks, but right now this was just to kind of show you how the filament looks when it comes out of the box. Don't roll away. Awesome. Not a lot goes into the packaging for that filament, as you could tell, but even though the box was slightly beat up, the spool and the filament on the inside were perfect and will print without any issues, no doubt. Well, we've gotten to the point where I kind of need to close up shop here, and I'm going to tell you what I like, what I don't like, and give you some final thoughts. First, here's kind of what I like about this machine. It prints extraordinarily well, it, and that's even an understatement. If you, if you saw that Soundwave model up close, you would agree with me that, that the quality is near unbeatable with that thing. Once, once a printed part approaches looking like an injection molded part, you're, you're done, you've won. You've got a printer and a printing system that can handle nearly anything and that's where we're talking that's what we're talking about with this Zortrax printer it can print like crazy it doesn't matter the orientation of the model it doesn't matter the resolution of the model this seems to handle it and handle it really really well 
I like this printer because it's fairly quiet. I have lots of other printers that are louder, but this, this printer isn't that loud at all. The menu that you access in order to change filament or print via the SD card or do any of that is really, really easy to use and easy to read. Loading and unloading the filament is very easy through this system that they have up top. You just route the filament through this tube and into the extruder. The printhead itself is supported by two shafts in either axes of X and Y to make sure it doesn't budge. It's belt driven on the inside. The build plate itself is magnetically held in place so that it doesn't go anywhere. And it's, it's solid. All told, I like most everything about this print system. Well, what is there not to like? There is, okay, so this is kind of a small thing and then, and then the big thing that really needs to find itself in a bigger discussion. This build plate, in order to get models off of it, I recommend you don't take it out of the machine. It's on a magnetic system so that you can take it out of the machine, but there's these two different connectors in the back. And the instructions tell you to take these connectors off and take the build plate out of the system and then plug these back in. The issue is these aren't, these aren't connectors that are meant to be taken off and, and put back together over and over and over again. And over time, you're gonna wear them out. And then over time, you're gonna need to send this machine in for service. I, I don't understand why a printer such as this, at the price tag it's at, asks you to use connectors that aren't built to be taken apart over and over in order to take things off the build plate. My suggestion is just do what I do. Get yourself a chisel and work the model off the build plate. The machine will auto level itself and you can do that from the menu system, but other than that, you, you don't, I don't recommend removing that build plate. There's no reason to. There's no reason to put undue force on those connectors when those connectors control the build plate heating up and the build plate moving. Just, just don't do that. Leave it in the machine. The other thing I kind of don't like is, is this is an absolutely closed system. This machine is from Zortrax, and the Zortrax machine will only print Zortrax material, and the models that you print on this are only sliceable in the Z Suite software. So, this is a system. This isn't just a printer. The Zortrax is a print system because you have to use their software, and you have to use their filament. In technology, it's not, it's not uncommon to have an all-in-one system for the consumer. And that leads me to my final thought. This, this machine prints like a dream come true. And I am amazed by what it puts out. It does it consistently and it does it just at the push of a button. I, I put the SD card in and I select the model and then I hit print and out comes this wonderful model. There's no second guessing it. There's no, there's no having to wait for the first layer to go down correctly. When I got this machine, I've had zero failures. Granted, some of the models didn't turn out perfect, but there was, there was no failures. And it's not like I babysat the machine. I just hit print and walked away. I hit print and I went to bed. I hit print and I went to work. It, it, it did everything I asked it. But is that what you want in a printer? Is that what you want in a print system? A lot of 3D printing is built around open source and collaboration and being able to use part A and part B to solve a problem and come up with part C. The Zortrax system is not built for the 3D printing tinkerer or the person that likes to that likes to put things together. This is a system built for someone who just wants high quality consistently without having to tinker with anything. And if you look on their website, this printer is is $2000 US and a roll of filament will cost $50. US, you are paying a high price 
for what I think to be a decent sized build volume, but you need to take into consideration it's an amazing printer that has awesome models consistently and is that worth the price? Do you, do you want to enter into a print system for a higher price knowing that you're going to get high quality consistently? And that's completely and totally up to you. Personally, I like the Zortrax and I've talked with the Zortrax company. They're gonna let me keep this machine for a lot longer so that I can show off more of its abilities to print things. And I'm happy about that because I'm going to have a printer that will print whatever I throw at it within its bounds and I won't have to worry about it. That's great. It's not for everything, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to want to print everything with this printer, but whatever I throw at it, it's going to print really, really well. Well, there you go. That's the Zortrax M200, and it's, it's so very interesting. I can't say go out and buy it, but I can't say don't buy it because it's an interesting system, and it's up to you whether or not it's worth the price of entry. Well, if you like this, give this a thumbs up, and if you have a comment about anything I've talked about, please leave it down below. If you want to help support the channel financially and enable more reviews like this, click that link up there in the corner and that'll take you to Patreon where you can pledge a dollar or more per month to help the channel acquire things and make videos for you. I'm never going to require that and I'll always do this for free for as long as I can. I will, however, ask that every once in a while you send me a social high five. And speaking of high fives, as always, high five. Is Joel telling and he's printing 3D like some Pokemon, a gun from Destiny? And when you call him a nerd, he'll stand up proudly because he's packing some heat from his YouTube family. He can review printers till he falls to the floor, then he'll give them away like Oprah in 04. There's the Wombat, Volsbot, G Max XT, then a break for Red Bull and Lobo's Taco Crispy. Printed koozie in his hand for his drink. He sets up his GoPro and prints out a bender bang. So send him a dollar to put in his head or a self addressed envelope for a sticker instead. There's a nerd box on boxings and Q's and A's and he'll open your mail every single Friday. And of course you can't forget that pancake bot and filament sonically is a Joel's little sign. And they printed this printer at Holodex Studio like Lando Calrissian and Fruits Dried Han Solo. So show your support on Patreon or subscribe and as always, high five.